I am Brian with the Traveling Bodhi. If you've been following my journey, you know I've been on quite a journey with building a bus out and having lots of fun. But I'm taking a weekend away to one of my favorite places, the Leelanau Peninsula in, upper, in northern Michigan. Not the northern lower peninsula of Michigan, if that makes sense for all you people. Anyway, here I am. My favorite place, I come here camping. I've been coming here every year, multiple times a year for five, six years. And as you can see behind me, it's just this lush, beautiful, dense, there's a blue car, <laughs> lush, dense forest. And guess where my campsite is? Tent right beneath this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tree. Isn't that amazing? I get to just ground in that energy all weekend. So this travelogue is going to be about me exploring some of the places that I really love about the Leelanau Peninsula, Lake Michigan, the beaches, a few little coastal towns that are up here. Just some of the little simpleness that I love. And one thing I really, really love about this part of the world is it's simple, it's quiet. And not a lot of people know about Empire, not a lot of people know about, they know about Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes, it's this big national park, which I'm not gonna be going to in this video. Maybe a section of it, but you'll see. I like the quieter things, I don't like big hoopa doopa doopa national parks. <laughs> so anyway, join me on this journey as I explore the Illinois Peninsula and the beauty and the majesty that it has to offer. Let's go. I spoke too soon the beach is like super packed today because I think it's like it's the remnants of the 4th of July weekend even though the 4th was yesterday either way I'm out here about to go for a swim in the beautiful lake a little bit of footage of here me walking along the water right but uh, you may or may not be able to hear me because of the wind and the waves but either way I love this view like the sand dunes which I'll probably, I'll probably go there tomorrow and uh, yeah it's uh, lots of wind out there today I really do love this part of the world. There's so much fun to have and to play. I mean, like bouncy trees and things like that, right? So, it's a crazy day. And in Lake Michigan, you never know what you're gonna get weather-wise. So here it is, the beautiful scenery. Yeah. Another thing I feel compelled to share, maybe because I'm a born and raised Michigander, but if you've never been to the Great Lakes, I always, what's so special? They're just lakes, say a lot of people. Well, a, they're the largest fresh body of water in the world. For those of you who don't know that, the collective five lakes are, right? Also, at most points, you cannot see the other side, right? And they're visible from space. But regardless, this is like Michigan. Over there, somewhere is Chicago, or Illinois, or Wisconsin is that way, right? But granted, it's not the clearest of days, but you cannot see the other side. That's one thing I love about these lakes is the vastness and the power of them. And one other fact that I love sharing with people who never understand the power of the Great Lakes, you know those freight liners that you see, cargo ships that are going from you know, the United States to Asia and wherever? These things have sank them back in history, right? The Edmund Fitzgerald, look it up, it's one of the most famous ones. But these things are powerful and they're to be respected. And I just really love these Great Lakes for so many, so many, so many, so many reasons. And uh, just wanting to share that passion with you about why these are important to me. So, 
another part of this travel log. Mm. One thing that's really fascinating about this black sand is that I've never seen it really on any other beach in this country. And I've been to the Pacific and the Atlantic. And it's quite unique. And what's fun, as you can see here, uh, last time I was here making fun of sand art like this yin yang, which is really cool. And so things are possible with the sand. It's really unique and colorful. And I'm not really sure how it happens. I don't know if it's just the sediment in the sand, but it just seems to only form at this particular point where the dry sand and wet sand meet. So I'm curious about what it is, but a fascinating thing that is here on Lake Michigan. So as I'm enjoying my fire here, so it's a cooker, <laughs> triple fire sign, fire, right? Anyway, I, I like big fire, as you can see. So other thing I want to note while I'm sort of talking about the region and one thing I love about Michigan is its diversity in agriculture. I had heard from someone recently that Michigan is one of the most agriculturally diverse states um, up there with like California and, and Florida, right? Because, I mean, we have apples, peaches, all sorts of stone fruit. Here in the Traverse City area, cherries, I mean, even downstate, cherries are huge, right? There's cherries, uh, cherries are the, are the state fruit. And even up here in the Traverse City, uh, Leelanau Peninsula area, there's a lot of vineyards, a lot of grapes, a lot of vineyards. And uh, last year I was up here I was at a cidery and they were saying that they were winning world-class awards with the apple cider, the hard apple cider that they make here, as well as the wines. The wines here in, in Traverse City in the Leelanau Peninsula area are winning awards all around the world. So it's, it's, it's really amazing to think like Michigan, of all places, right, has all this diversity. And I think what it is, it's, it's two peninsulas, right? And so geographically, that's a lot of interesting diversity that brings to the to the plate as far as agriculture and it's it's kind of midwest so it's flat lots of great spot for farms so for me i'm um celebrating by eating some local cherries <laughs> and just sitting by the fire and enjoying my evening after being out by the lake today and really interesting with the lake just watching it be so diverse you know uh, i was out there earlier sunny and hot and then a storm came through and I was literally standing on the water here. The quality of the light off the water was really amazing. And all of a sudden, literally, I felt the temperature drop like 10 degrees. And I was like, am I going crazy? But there was a couple that was standing right next to me that verified that. And it was I never felt like it drop. Like obviously the cold front came through, right? And so it was just really fascinating to experience that. So yay nature some beautiful things so yeah just sharing a little more with you in this beautiful travel log and i think i'm just going to bed down for the night with my uh, fire and then tomorrow i'll pick up and we'll see where the adventures take us there so this next morning here and diversity these lakes have so much diversity i just need to point this out look there's these ladies kayaking on this lake there's not a puff of wind this is amazing. One thing I'll never, I'm never, I'm never shocked by, honestly, is I typically get here and it's rough and wavy and hur and windy and blowy, and then the next day it's like calm, calm, calm water, right? And so calm that you can kayak on it. You know, when I first saw that, I'm like, this is amazing. And then the other thing I want to point out is really just like how incredibly clear this water is, right? People will think, oh, well, it's a great lake, must be dirty and full of pollution. And it's like, no, this water is super clear, super clear, and in theory, you could drink it because it's not salt water, right? It's not salt water. So, and there's no sharks. <laughs> I, I've introduced a few people for the first time who grew, grew up on ocean states like Florida or California. Go, there's no sharks? I'm like, no, there's, there's no salt? I'm like, no. It's, it's shark, shark and salt free, everyone. <laughs> and um, I don't know, just the amazing gifts of this region. So here we are, love it. 
one town that I really like coming to up here is Glen Arbor. They have all these really awesome like t-shirt shops and knick-knack shops and um, yeah, I just love it. It's this cute little town you can sort of bike through. You can see people biking, biking through here and it's just, it's right along the coast. It's a great place to get some food and hang out. Uh, they have farmers markets here regularly. There's an IGA grocery store and they have really good food and just a co cool place to hang out and they have great just sort of vibes here. It's just a fun place. So if you're in the area, I highly recommend Glen Arbor. I do. So when I come here, I also come to the M22 shop. One thing that's really cool about this place is they have all these apparel for M22. And so what M22 is, you see all these signs uh, around, maybe on cars, maybe not. But what M22 is, it's the main sort of state road that runs through this area. And years ago, M22, someone came up with a business idea to sort of promote the area, the region, and all the things it has to offer. The, the, all the outdoor biking, canoeing, kayaking, skiing, everything and just sort of promote the area and doing to so also conserve the area and to make sure that it doesn't overdevelop or overpopulate or um, just, just stays a good natural area to do outdoor stuff. So M22 is a cool place um, and uh, yeah, that's where I come. This is it. Yeah. So here's the next major thing that I love to do when I'm here. <laughs> Pyramid Point. Pyramid Point is great. One thing I want to just point out about this area is, and you can see here, right, as I'm walking this trail, is counter to the rest of sort of Michigan. And as you can see here on this drive in to Pyramid Point, it reminds me of Northern California. I lived in Marin County for a little bit, and it sort of reminds me of Marin County, hilly, uh, really dense forest and just sort of beautiful, right? So here I am walking up the trail, something I've done so many times, and it's one of the best vistas in the region that, I, that I've been to that gets you a good view of the lake and just a cool place to hang out. So uh, when I get to the top, we'll, uh, I'll show you the amazing view. The other cool thing about this region is the beautiful nature, right? There's so much beautiful nature like this amazing monarch butterfly just hanging out on a milkweed plant, getting some love getting some food for his uh, epic flight. Coming up to your final approach. Part of it's ducking under this log. So here's the epic view from the top one of the beaver islands out there and yes that is a very steep drop and as you can see it's sort of like almost like tropical blue almost like uh, Caribbean blue out there right so just the calmness of this lake and there's a big sign that you may have saw when it came up it said don't go down there and don't go down this embankment because you may not get back up and as you can see lots of people have gone down there and I've actually seen people go down there before and uh, of course, like these macho men, like, oh, I can do this. This is great. And they do it. They go back, they go down, all the way down, and they get back up. And as you can see, there's a bit of a, you can see the beach way down there. And you can see maybe how big those birds are for contrast. If you can even see those little seagulls down there. But uh, yeah, this is the epic view, best view in the park. And here is one more view and you may be able to see the turquoise a little bit better now that's one thing i love how clear like i was saying earlier how clear this water is and how big and vast this water is and granted it's hazy but you know those are two tiny boats out there um well i'm sure they're not tiny but but just the view out here is i love to come here and just sit at this view and just take it all in it's um it's definitely amazing, you know, it's definitely amazing just to see all the nature around and have this. <laughs> I love that this is in my life. You know, I, I can't, I can't exchange this for anything else. It's the closest thing to the ocean. It is an ocean. It's an inland sea, but it's the closest thing to being to the ocean that I got in my life. And I'll take it. So if you're curious to see, if you don't believe me, 
I'm sure you believe me, but how steep this embankment is, it's literally a 45 degree angle. <laughs> this embankment's literally a 45 degree angle to the ocean. You can see the ocean, you can see the, the water line, right? And it goes all the way down. And there has been times further down in Empire where I actually have gone down this steep embankment all the way down to the water. And you can see how small the water looks down there, right? Those are the waves crashing. And um, the other interesting thing is, is just the beauty of this dune, right? This dune, the water, the contrast. This looks like sky, but this is actually water, that sky. <laughs> just like the vastness of this. And here, there are many trails, many dune trails that you can hike here at Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes. We're technically in the park now of Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes. All of this Pyramid Point is a part of Sleeping Bear. And one thing that's really cool that I love are these old dead trees. Those are actually old trees that have been here for so long that they've just completely dried out. And it looks like sort of end of the world apocalyptic sort of thing right but again I just I love the dunes here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna if you haven't already I'll put a link right right here or over here somewhere uh, in the top of the screen to White Sands Desert in New Mexico that I was at just a few months ago part of my travelogue series and I explored White Sands Desert and that was just amazing right completely different to well one it's in the desert it's the middle of nowhere two here we get this amazing lake michigan view and all these dunes here right and the other interesting thing about these dunes is like i said the sand here comparatively to the other video like i said in white sands this sand's actually pretty warm um i mean it's a, it's a relatively cool day i think it's only like 75 maybe right now and it's tolerable right when i was in white sands it was probably in the 80s or high 80s and I could be barefoot and it was cold the, the sand was cold it was really fascinating I mean I've been here before when it's like a hot hot day and even wearing sandals or sh even wearing sandals like I feel like my feet are gonna burn it's pretty crazy so um, anyway just wanting to share this continuing amazing view with you of this part of the world The other thing that makes this region really unique is not only the Great Lakes and the dunes here, but the large deciduous forest and pine forest that completely intermix with the park, right? So you have large bodies of water, hot, hot sand, whoo, hot sand, all these dune grasses and beautiful wildflowers, as you can kind of see over here. Beautiful butterflies, whee! <laughs> and pine pine and deciduous forest right so i just love how diverse this is here right it's really amazing so the beauty of the region yay and, and butterflies so the view down like i said it's steep and i was just sharing a lot of people i don't mind sharing information with people but one time i was here a few years ago and there were these crossfitter boulder climbing rock climbing guys from Colorado right and they're like oh yeah we're gonna do this three of them <laughs> and they went for it and they went down that huge 45 degree embankment all the way to the water and I'm like this is gonna be great so I decided to watch them and they all made it back up and this one guy of course the alpha of the group he's like oh yeah made it back in like 12 minutes come on guys and it's like you know egging on his, his buddies to come down come up the hill and uh, I'm like well of course you're a crossfitter you, you rock, rock climb in the Rocky Mountains and in, in that in front in the front range in Boulder right of course you can have stand I'm like yeah, this thing most people w would not be able to make it up it you know it says it might take two hours but I've also heard stories of the Coast Guard needing to be called in to rescue people so it's funny watching all these tours I'm like oh, I'm not going down that thing because it's it's scary looking at it it's definitely scary so anyway heading back down um, I'm gonna take a rest 
and uh, we're gonna head to the next town. We're gonna head over to um, Leland. I really love Leland. It's a cool little town, and uh, yep, stay tuned, and we'll, we're heading there next. Let's go. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention as an interlude as I drive to Leland is a postscript video uh, a number of years ago me and a partner at the time we were traveling this area and uh, I love to play on trees I'm a drummer I'm a percussionist I love to drum on things so here's a video of me drumming up there at Pyramid Point check it out I just crossed the 45th parallel, which means I'm halfway between the pole and the equator. Another cool thing about this part of the world is that that's how far we are. Really, it's sort of crazy. You know, not many people think about that. In Oregon, it's down, I think, around Salem. Salem, but it's south of Portland. I can't remember where it is. Either way, just a cool part of this region, right, is that we get to cross the 45th parallel. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I really love that. But anyway, there you go. There it is. Yay, traveling. Bye. So here we are in Leland. Here's the canal that runs from the lake into town. And I'm just showing you this because this is sort of a quintessential view of Leland. And where those people are standing on that bridge there, we're going to go there next because that's another famous spot. And you get to see the lake from there and really what Leland is about. So you can see this is the canal going into a little area through a little waterfall here and you can see all sorts of different fishing stuff going on here. This is what I really love about Leland is the water that goes through here and just this is the heart of the city here. Oh One thing I love about this town is I feel like I'm in California. When I'm walking through here, all the people, the views of the, uh, the marina and all these little shops are really cool and uh, I just love it and I'm about to go to get some smoked fish for my for my dad and I. My, my dad and I both love smoked fish and they have an amazing place here with smoked fish and apparently a really famous cheese place here as well. So uh, I just really love this place. It's awesome to come check out. So many cool things here. And here's some imagery of the the backside of this place. The, the canal with all the different shops and I just really love the, the feel and the antiquity of this place. You can tell it's been here for a long time and just the historic qualities of it are just really, really potent. And, uh, and here's the other side of the, the dam. We can see the waterfall and the historic hotel here. And uh, a few years ago, it did flood when the water got high. So it's just, you know, water is a real thing. Raising water is a real thing here in Michigan. We have to deal with tides and raising raising water lines and stuff like that. So it's, uh, it's a real thing, but either way, I love this place. It's uh, water, lakes, makes me happy. <laughs> so while I'm out here, I wanna share a travel hack with you. It is for years now, it started off as being frugal, but I'm seeing the benefit of it now is typically before I get on the road to go somewhere, even if I know where I'm going, I always buy a bunch of food to take with me meaning I go to a grocery store or a deli and get a bunch of like to-go stuff. Like I, for example, have some stuff here that I just take with me and I get a bunch of it and I bring a cooler with me and I store the stuff in a cooler. And when I get hungry, I just sit and eat. And I never really thought about the benefit of this until just now I'm here in Leland. And I guess this, this place, the, the Bluebird behind me is a famous place to eat, but it's closed today. And I'm just sitting here snacking on my food and in the process of the 10 minutes I've been here, I've had a number of people walk up and be disappointed that it's closed today. And like, oh, well, we don't, well, we're just striking out. There's nowhere to eat today. It's just like, oh, look at that, a little perk. <laughs> bringing your own food. Who thought, you know, the idea of being frugal and bringing your own food was a benefit. But I, I like it because when I'm hungry, I can just eat and I don't have to worry about finding a place and spending exorbitant money on meals as I travel. So. That's just a little travel hack I have that I'd share with you, so. When Willie Nelson said, seeing things that I may never see again and I can't wait to get on the road again, that's so true. Like, uh, this thing, this thing, <laughs> I just stumbled upon it. 
I'm guessing it's a house or some ramshackle made of driftwood. I mean, that's pretty flippin' sweet. If I've never seen anything cool in my life, I think that falls squarely into that column. Check this out. This is like a bunch of driftwood built into this house with a center beam. I mean, clearly someone knew what they were doing here. This is pretty awesome. I think I gotta, I'm about to hang out here. And just for context, you can see this thing is nowhere near anything. It's you know, the entrance to the beach is way down there. Here's this beautiful structure, right? And there's some private stairs coming down here and uh, more private beach down here. But as you can see, it's not really anywhere. Nowhere, nowhere. Uh, yeah, some clever bloke uh, put that together. Maybe they, maybe they do live here, who knows? I don't know. So that's Leland, historic fish town here. That's where we're just walking down there getting all the, uh, the fish. And then there's the marina. And that's really why I love Leland. It's got that great beach where I just saw that fun structure and historic fish town and all the different shops and a cool downtown. So yeah, this is gonna be heading out of Leland now. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna just sit with it and see what's next. But uh, anyway, this is what I love about Lillanau Peninsula, is there's just all these cool little towns, and as you can tell, I'm more partial to nature than to the cities, but either way, yay, traveling. Whew. So here at M22, they're having a bar, as you can see, and I'm having some local cider cherry if you're excited about it and again one thing I like about M22 is they're supporting local and here's the the menu right with the menu of, they have an offer drinking and they have wines and as I said apples apples and cherries so I'm getting a hard cider with cherry and it's pretty exciting so I'm having a relaxing day here in Glen Arbor and just having a drink and enjoying summertime in northern Michigan you gotta love it right? Yay, summertime. Yay, Michigan. Up north. <laughs> One other thing that Empire has that's really cool is the Bluffs Trail. And it's similar to um, Pyramid Point. Uh, it's different, but it's very similar, where it's a little, very gentle mile, mile and a half uphill climb to a beautiful vista point. The difference is you just get a different vista. <laughs> so. I like Pyramid Point better because it's just, it's fun, it's dunesy. This is a little more woodsy, um, but either way, we'll, I'll take you up there and I'll give you a few. Let's see what happens, let's go. I'll just say one thing, is I love comparing places that I've been to with other places that I've been. Human, as humans, we like to make comparisons for our own brain to feel more comfortable with things. That's just who we are as humans. Fun little fact. <laughs> you remind me of so-and-so because I want to be comfortable with you. Anyway, I feel like I'm walking through the Pacific Northwest right now. Oregon, Washington. Uh, it's just, again, just the green. <laughs> the green. Uh, also, it's been raining here off and on the last few days, and we just had a rainstorm, and so that's why I'm a little more bundled up right now. But just the wet, the lush, the green, the squishy ground. I've been missing the Pacific Northwest here, and uh, been getting an opportunity to experience it here in Michigan. I love that. So anyway, wanted to just add a little bit of a note, as you can see the lush, the green behind me as I duck underneath a fallen tree. Whoa! Almost hit my head there. A little bit of a teaser. Here is the beginning of it, the view, but it's just a teaser. We're gonna get to the real one, I promise you. Just stay tuned, stay tuned. <laughs> one other thing I wanna note while I'm walking in this woods, um, this experience, I feel held. Energetically, emotionally, I feel held, I feel nurtured, I feel supported, I feel safe here, right? 
And I know that's not true for everyone. Uh, years ago, I met um, some ladies traveling from Arizona and they feel scared. They feel nervous, they feel uh, uncertain because they can't see the horizon line, right? You, they're, they're scared because there's stuff that can be lurking. Whereas they feel safe in the open desert out in um, Arizona, right? In New Mexico and all the openness where I, I feel scared out there because there's nowhere to hide, right? And so interesting, again, psychologically, um, fascinating how as humans we have different experiences for things, right? And so I'm curious if you want, if you're watching this, what are your thoughts? Do you feel safe in an environment like this? Or do you feel more safe in an environment that's more open, flat, desert, out and out, that, you know, sort of thing. Uh, leave in the comment below, so let me know. I'm really curious because everyone's different. I think it really depends on what your upbringing is and what, you're, what you've been exposed to. So, yeah, and also it gets dark. <laughs> I mean, I know we're getting close to sunset, but in the woods, it gets dark. And I love that, I love that. All right, we're almost there. the wonderful boardwalk to the vista and it's coming <laughs> oh my goodness here it is and like I said it's like pyramid point where you get this amazing view of the lake an endless view of the lake right and you also get a similar view down here and honestly that is probably pyramid point or pretty close to it right which I think pyramid point I think is around the horn around the horn from there but either way, again, just this amazing vista, view, right? View of Lake Michigan in all of her glory, right? And this trail goes on a little bit longer to a nice little uh, park bench up here, right? But uh, I just love this. And uh, <laughs> there, uh, there is an option, right, that I like about this hike. And I'm not going to do it today just because I'm not prepared for it. Is if you really want to have a fun trip, local taught me this many, many years ago, the first time I did this, which is remember how I said in that at Pyramid Point, how it's like a straight dune, straight down? Well, you can do that one here, right? You can bomb down, bomb down the dune and walk the beach shore back. Right, and so I did that. I've done that a few times now. Actually, you can watch walk the beach shore back. However, the sort of downside to that is you have to be committed to a multiple hour, maybe three or four hour adventure at least, right? Because you have to park in town, walk up, and I'm sure the National Park Service does not like this speech saying this so censored. Um, but you can go down, but then you have to walk along the shore the whole way back, right? So it's a bit of a hike, right? Literally. So um, either way, just food for thought. But again, this view, look, you can, you can see, you can see what, I'm, what I've been walking and just this beautiful view. There's a wonderful lake there. And actually, this is beautiful. That right there is Empire Beach where I just was, right? Or actually, I'm gonna be heading down there to, to wrap this video here in a few minutes. I'll be heading down there, I'm gonna go get some ice cream and uh, go down there. So that right there is the beach. So in theory, you could go down here and walk that long way back and then walk into town, right? So you could do that if you really wanted to, but um, that's uh, sort of viewer's choice there, really. But anyway, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful view up here and you know, also give some benches to have a seat on so here it is another epic <laughs> part of this beautiful part of Lake Michigan Leelanau Peninsula and gorgeous Lake Michigan here we are the lovely town of Empire Empire Michigan number of things that I love about this town one this place it's just really cool old like they have a bunch of like old sort of Old things, new things. It's called old and new for a reason. I love it. They have lots of amazing crystals and rocks and geos like amethyst crystals that are like this big and a bunch of old stuff. So it's really cool. And I'm just sort of like looking down. This is like the main drag here, right? Right? 
much here, but at the far end, which I'm gonna to go to in a little bit, is an ice cream shop. I love that little outdoor store. And uh, it's just quiet, literally. It's just it's just a little quiet one horse town, literally. That, the blinking light down there is the only, <laughs> only traffic light in town. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in here and check it out for a little bit, get some ice cream, and uh, yeah, I love Empire. It's tiny, it's cute, it's beautiful. I like simple, as you know, I like simple, so here's simple. This is one thing I love about Empire, is that in their front yard, they just have a little bake sale, always going, always going. It's like I've been coming here for years, that thing has been here this entire time, right? And you can always get fresh made jams and pastries and stuff like that. There's never anyone there, it's like the honor system, like you put the money in if you want something, and if you don't, you don't. That's what I love. It's like, it's simple, <laughs> it's simple, simple. Not only do they have waffle cones, fresh made waffle cones. <laughs> they, they literally just made these right before I showed up. And that's awesome. That's what I love about small town places like this. Like they're, they're committed to excellence and committed to good food. So yay for, um, uh oh, butter pecan. Yay ice cream. I love it. <laughs> All right, important question. Is it pecan or is it pecan? Put in the comments below, pecan or pecan. You tell me. Anyway, wrapping this video now, back here at the beaches in Empire, and again, loving this lake. And again, there's another storm coming through, so we'll see what happens tonight. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. I hope this has been a fun and by all means not comprehensive video of Leland Up Peninsula, but more of my favorite places of where I like to go when I come up here. Again, this beach, one of my favorite beaches ever. I love it. I'm gonna go walk it right now with my ice cream, with my pecan, <laughs> butter pecan, pecan, I don't know. Whatever. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. And if, like I said, I have other travelog videos, check those out. Um, I have, as of right now, the recording of this, I have one on White Sands Desert, which I talked about earlier, and I also have one on Santa Fe, and then also a fun uh, travelog with some tire uh, fiascos I was having. And also check out my bus build videos. They will continue for a while, well, hopefully maybe through summer. Either way, check those out. I'll have some links here below afterwards. So thank you all for listening. Be well, and if you like traveling, I highly, highly recommend this part of the world. So come check it out. Michigan love, baby. Oh yeah. Also, lastly, like and subscribe to this channel. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, follow my videos, share them with anyone that you know may be interested. Also, Lastly, I do have an Instagram channel, travelingbody.com, travelingbody at Instagram. So follow me there and uh, yay. Have a beautiful, lovely day and uh, we'll see you on the next journey. Woo